In this video today, I'm gonna to use the Nano VNA to measure a little filter like this. Now this here is a SMA uh, male and SMA female on a PCB. I actually got this made up at uh, recently to try and solve the issue that Baofeng users are plagued with. That being dirty Baofeng radios. So all this is, this is a little low pass filter. So you can see there that there are a couple of components, a couple of inductors, a couple of capacitors. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to sweep this using the Nano VNA to see if it, if I've actually got the design right. So what we're going to do is we're going to use both ports here. We've got the S11 and the S21. We're going to do a through measurement and we're going to use Nano VNA app. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to be able to connect this filter in line. So what I want to do is I want to measure just the filter and not the cables that connect to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calibrate these cables out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and do a calibration here on the Nano VNA. So what we've got to do is go and select our frequency. So this is a low pass filter. So what I've done is I've selected the frequency here of about 100 and, or we can go 130 megahertz. And we've got a stop frequency of 450 megahertz. So what we're going to be looking at here is we're going to be looking at the two meter band, which is what the roll off should be around about 150 megahertz. And it's going to roll off as we go down, uh, as we go up in frequency, up to the 70 centimeter band, to try and quell some of those harmonic issues. So I'm going to connect my Nano VNA up now to the PC. I'm going to select it, and we're going to go into continuous scan mode. Now, what we can do is we need to recalibrate because I've been using this for something else. So we go up to calibrate, reset it. And then we can go in and we can put in our calibration. So the first one we want to do is we want to do short. Then we will plug in open and calibrate that one. And then put in our load. And now because we are doing a through measurement, we need to be able to connect the filter in line using both of our connectors, uh, sorry, our test leads here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect one test lead to the S11 port. And I'm going to connect the other lead to the S21 port. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the barrel here to connect these two together. And what this is going to do is it's going to zero out these cables. Now, I could have used a connector which had SMAs and everything on it because I'm going to have to use adapters here to connect the SMA to the, uh, to the board but I don't think it's going to be that critical. I just want to get an overview of what this actually looks like. So now that we've done that, we can set the sweep. We can disconnect our cables. So now that they're open here in the middle, so we've got our leads coming out of our VNA and we've got these open. And now we can connect our device under test, which is the little SMA um, connector here, or the little SMA board. Now, by the way, while I do this, there is a link in the description below to a cheat sheet for the Nano VNA. It lists a couple of things that I've put together to help you uh, when you're doing these kind of measurements so that you don't have to sort of keep referring back to things all of the time. So hopefully that helps out. It's completely free to download. So check that out in the description below. Okay, so now what I've done is I've got my adapters here on my board, which is <laughs> looking rather large. So now what I can do is I can connect this in. Now what I'm looking at here is I'm actually looking at the return loss of this particular unit. So the basically the best SWR or the best return loss is here at 142.8 megahertz. So that's just outside the two meter band where I wanted it. In fact, I wanted it at around about 146 megahertz, which is sitting right there. You can see that the return loss there is negative 18 or an SWR of 1.2. That's not too bad, but it means that I probably need a little bit of a redesign of my filter. So if we switch now from the S11 to the LogMag S21, this is what it's going to look like through the filter with uh, our sweep. So we can see here that we've got at the top here just about, oh, about 1 dB of loss, which is what I uh, think I 
made this filter have, uh, yeah, roughly there about two meters. It's about 0.98 of a dB. It's not too bad up there at two meters. Then when we get to about, a, I think I said 150 megahertz, what's that, 155 megahertz, we start to drop off. You can see there's the 3 dB point as the cutoff frequency of this particular filter. And it starts to drop down quite dramatically. By the time we get to uh, the second harmonic of two meters, which is around about 290 megahertz or so, we are right in a dip there, right in a very deep dip of about negative 65, negative 70. It's jumping around a little bit there as it does its measurements. But it is looking pretty good. If we then go up towards 400 megahertz, we could see that that's still sitting better than 55 dB. So this filter is looking really good as far as the loss is concerned um, at the two meter frequency. But then as far as getting rid of all of our harmonics, our second harmonic here at 290 megahertz and our third harmonic at 400 megahertz, it's doing a pretty good job. Now I could tweak this to make it a little bit better and that's what I'm going to do, adjust a couple of values to shift that insertion loss uh, or the best return loss I should say to higher into the 2 meter band rather than 142 megahertz. I'm quite happy with the performance higher up. Obviously if I want to use this on a real Baofeng radio then there's going to be a little bit of a problem because I'm only going to be able to run on the 2 meter band. If I try to run on the 70 centimeter band then there's going to be way too much loss through this filter. So you need to make sure that you remove this from the line before you go operating on the 70 centimeter band. Now I've actually done some tests here on a handheld radio and it makes actually quite a big difference on receive and also uh, to be able to notch out those bad spurs coming from your radio too. So um, this is just a little thing that I just played around with. I'm not sure if anyone's actually interested in getting something like this. Let me know in the comments below if it would actually interest you, but I'm gonna change the design a little bit and uh, see if I can get it more perfected, but this might actually solve the Baofeng and the dirty Baofeng issue. So let me know anyway what you think. So again, I still think that the Nano VNA is something that needs to be in every ham radio shack. If you want to get one, again, there is a link below in the description. And if you want to see some of the other videos that I've done on the Nano VNA and the measurements that you can do, I did a full playlist on there, including measuring ferrite cores and the effectiveness of those two. And that is over here in this playlist that you can watch right now.